Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to explain how to have financial security. I know this is a topic that's on a lot of people's minds right now with the economy the way it is, with this unprecedented money printing and governments telling everybody they have to shut down their businesses and stay inside, etc., etc., etc. So this is obviously very important for everybody to know. And we're going to go into this in a much deeper level than you've probably heard elsewhere, right? I'm not going to just tell you to save a bunch of money or or invest in the stock market, or buy a bunch of extra ammo and store it in your basement. I mean, I don't have anything against any of those things, but I'm gonna explore this on a deeper level. Now, if you don't already know who I am, my name is Chris Shoup, and I help people to be free, to be free financially, mentally, spiritually. So if you want more freedom in your life, then you're in the right place, and I recommend that you subscribe to my channel. Now, this topic is particularly important because you have so much freedom, so much more freedom, psychologically speaking, if you have your downsides covered. You can take risks in your business. You can take risks with your job. There, there's so much more options that you have in your life if you know that if it doesn't work out, then you're covered, right? If you can sustain a failure and you're not gonna be on the street. So let's start with the basic fundamentals here and talk about where financial security comes from. Now, what financial security means on the most basic level is that you have enough stuff, right? So let's call this stuff. That means you, you have food, you have a house, maybe you have a car, uh, you have water, you have clean air, you have everything that you need to survive. So the very basic uh, top level of having security is to have enough stuff. Now, then we can ask the question, okay, well, what if I have enough stuff now, but then I use up that stuff and I need more stuff in the future? Okay, so we're getting one level deeper here. So the next level is going to be money. Right? Because what happens when you run out of stuff? Well, if you have money, then you buy more stuff. Okay, so then that begs the question, what happens if I run out of money? Well, let's go one level deeper and put income. So if you run out of money, you need an income source. You need something that's going to replace the money that you have lost. So an income source might be a job, it might be a business, it might be a succession of freelance gigs, but you need something that's replacing the lost money. Okay, so let's go one level deeper. What happens if you lose your income source? What happens if you lose your job? What happens if your business goes bust? Well, at that point, what you need are skills. Right? If you are able to do something useful in society, then you can create an income source from that. So if you know how to program a computer, let's say, and you have an income source, a job, where you're programming computers and you lose that job, well, you still have that skill of being able to program computers, and so you can use that skill to either get another job as a computer programmer, or you can use that skill to create a business. You can create a program and sell it to somebody, or you can work as a freelancer creating programs for people on a one-off basis. And if you've followed my channel for any time at all, you know I'm very big on learning skills, that you can learn any skills you want to, and those skills can make your life a whole lot better than it is now, and a whole lot more secure than it is now. Uh, so skills is the next step of the pyramid. And then I want to go down one level deeper because sometimes skills become obsolete. To continue with the, the computer programmer example, sometimes a computer programmer knows how to use a certain programming language, and then as time goes on, that programming language gets replaced. It goes out of, out of style, and so that skill is no longer relevant. That skill is no longer capable of producing an income. And so we have to go one further level deeper here, and that is the, a learning method, a way of learning new skills as they become relevant. And so this is the full pyramid. This is everything that you need in order to be financially secure. And you can, you can do things to make yourself more secure at every one of these five levels. 
right? At the, the stuff level, you can stockpile, right? You could, you could save a bunch of dry food. You could save a bunch of ammo in your basement. Uh, at the money level, you could save money or you could save gold or Bitcoin or you know, whatever you happen to use as money. At the income level, uh, you could do some networking, you could meet people at other companies so that if, if you happen to lose your job, then there are other jobs that are waiting for you. Or you could have a side business, right? While you are working at a particular job, you also have a freelance business on the side so you can fall back on that should you lose your job. Or you have the job to fall back on should your freelance business fail. Then on the skills level, you can learn new skills. You can update your existing skills. So if you knew, know an old programming language, you could become familiar with a new programming language. Uh, or you could diversify your skills so that, that you're learning something completely different. Maybe, maybe you learn how to garden or how to farm. Or you learn how to fix cars or you learn how to do marketing, you know? There's, there's any number of skills that you could learn and the more skills that you have, the more options you have to uh, create an income source should your current income source fail. And then the very bottom of the pyramid here is learning method. I, I wrote learning skills. I meant to say learning method. So I'm gonna correct that real quick. Learning method. If you have a learning method, then you have everything that you need for the rest of the pyramid here. Right, so not saying that you shouldn't do the other things, but the the further you go down the pyramid, the the more of a the more security you're giving yourself, right? Because if you stockpile a bunch of stuff, uh, and and you know that's your whole strategy. Let's say that's all you do is you stockpile a bunch of stuff, and that's your strategy for having security in the future. Well, that's not a bad idea. I don't discourage that at all. I think it's a good idea. However, uh, what happens when you run out of stuff? Or what happens when your stuff rots? What happens when someone steals your stuff? Right, you, you don't have a lot of security there. So um, you should ideally be, best thing to do would be to address every, every level of the pyramid at the same time. But the things at the bottom of the pyramid are going to provide you the uh, most sustainable security here. And so I have a particular method that I've developed for learning new skills, for the very bottom of the pyramid here, which I'm gonna share with you right now. This is something that I teach all my students in my Remote Jobs Bootcamp course, but it's, it's really relevant everywhere. It's not only relevant to remote jobs. And this is a four-step process that anybody with the internet can do. It's very simple, but not a lot of people actually think to do it themselves. So first step is to search job boards. Now, uh, why job boards? Well, job boards are just an easy way to figure out what's in demand. So what you're going to do is you're going to look through job boards and, you know, if you're looking for remote jobs, you're going to look specifically at remote job boards. This is what I teach in the boot camp, but you don't, you know, if you're not looking for a remote job, then any job board will do and figure out what job types are in demand. Figure out uh, what what companies are willing to pay for, get an idea of how much they pay, and get an idea of how many job postings there are. That will show you what jobs are in demand, and the more, the more companies are willing to pay for it means that you have less competition generally, right? That's why an open heart surgeon makes more than a, a waiter, because almost anybody can be a waiter but an open heart surgeon is a very specialized skill set that not a lot of people are able to do. Um, so generally speaking, something that is high paying is also gonna be fairly secure because you don't have to compete with a whole bunch of other people. Probably there's not a lot of people that are qualified to do the same kind of job. And by the way, this works just as well if you're doing a business because a job is just hiring someone to do something. If you were a business, if you run a business, you were, being hired by people to do something. It's, it's really the same thing. It's just, it's a different structure. And instead of somebody else owning the business and, uh, and controlling how the thing is delivered, it's you owning the business and controlling how the thing is delivered. But, you know, take the programmer analogy again. If you uh, create, a, if you work for somebody creating a computer program, that's a job. But whatever that computer program does for someone, you could, you could uh, create that computer program on your own and sell it to the person, right? It's, it's the same thing, it's the same skills, it's just a different way of delivering it. 
And the same thing is true with marketing or graphic design or home repair or car repair or you know just about anything else you can think of. It all works the same way. So you're gonna search the job boards, get an idea of what's in demand, what pays well, and then find a job type. So find a particular type of job that you could learn to do. And it's not necessarily something that you know how to do now, but something that you think, if I had the proper training, then I could do that, right? So, you know, if you're, if you're squeamish when you see blood, then maybe you don't want to be a doctor, uh, right? You know, kind of get, get an idea of what you could do with the training. Don't let the lack of training hold you back. So maybe, uh, maybe you don't know very much about fixing cars, but you, what little that you do know, you enjoy fixing cars. Okay, with the proper training, then you could learn to be an auto mechanic. That's what I'm talking about here. So find a job type that you would like to do that, and that is in demand, that pays well and, and has a fair few job listings. There's a lot of people looking for it. So once you find that job type, then you are going to list skills. You're gonna figure out within those job listings, in that job type, what are the skills that they ask for most often? What are the most important skills for job listings of that job type? This is showing you, this is, you're getting a little a level deeper here from what kind of job is in demand to what skills are in demand. And again, this works for whether you want to get a job or you wanna have a business. And in fact, you can even narrow it down further if you have a business, right? You can just have a business completely around a particular skill. So I could use marketing for an example of this. If you find a job as a, a digital marketer for a company, usually they're gonna, they're gonna want you to know how to do digital advertising. They're gonna want you to know how to do content creation. They're gonna want you to know how to do SEO. They're, maybe they're gonna want you to know how to do social media. Right, there are gonna be all these different skills that they want. Whereas if you have a business, you could learn one of those skills and make a business out of it. Right, you could have a business just doing advertising. You could have a business just doing search engine optimization. The point here is not necessarily to get you a new job. It could be, but the, the main thing I'm trying to get across here is this is how you figure out what skills will give you the biggest bang for your buck. Because not all skills are created equal. I mean, you could learn to do graphic design, for example, and then ever competing with a hundred other people every time you see like a $10 project, right? Chances are something like that, unless you're really, really good, unless you're really better than everybody else, something like that just is not gonna serve you very well. So you wanna figure out what skills uh, are really going to serve you, and that's the point of this process. So three is to list the skills, get an idea, of what those skills are that are the most in demand. And then you wanna figure out what skills you wanna learn from that list and then learn the skills. And there's a whole bunch of different places where you can do this, right? We have the internet. This is 2020, you know, as of recording this, and we have the ability to learn just about anything we could possibly ever want to learn. So take advantage of that. If you don't know, I'll give you a few, a few resources that I like. There's Coursera.org, uh, has a whole bunch of, of college courses. Udemy.com has a bunch of courses from individual experts that, that uh, teach their expertise one skill at a time. I mean, I, I teach a couple of courses. I teach a course on how to find remote jobs. I teach a course on how to create an Excel freelance business. If you have Excel skills, how to get customers to hire you just for your Excel skills. Um, I'm doing a training uh, very shortly on how to create a YouTube channel in such a way that you're actually getting paid to get subscribers instead of just having to sit there grinding and doing a whole bunch of work so that hopefully years in the future, you will make some money from ad income, right? I, I'm flipping that on its head so you get paid immediately. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description. Or if you're interesting, interested in any of those things that I just mentioned, then, then feel free to leave me a comment or send me an email. And then if you still can't find what you're looking for, then just Google it. I mean, if you wanna learn how to use 
Photoshop. Just search Photoshop tutorial on, Go on Google or do the same thing on YouTube. There's a gazillion different tutorials for just about any skill you might want to learn all on YouTube. Uh, or read books. I mean, I love reading books. I'm reading books all the time and, and you know, not necessarily about things, skills that I want to learn, just kind of learning new things in general, just things that are interesting to me because you, you never really know when you do that, when you're reading about something that's of interest to you, you never know when you're going to hit upon something that might actually be very valuable in the market. That might actually, you could build a business out of it or you could get a job from it. So I actually have a policy when, when I'm looking at books. If I, if I see a book that I think it might be interesting, and I think I got this from Ramit Sethi, he recommends this. If I see a book that, that I think would be interesting, that I think I would like to add this knowledge to my repertoire, these are nonfiction books, by the way, books that were, will uh, add to my knowledge, I just buy the book. I don't, I don't really think about it, I don't obsess about it, I buy the book. And then whether or not I get around to reading it right away, you know, I, I think about that later. But you know, I, I buy the book so it's available to me in that time that, that I should want to read it. And if I don't get around to reading it, then, then I, I wasted 10 or 15 bucks, who cares? So this is the whole four step process for how to learn new skills, when, how to identify new skills that are worth learning and how to actually learn them. So this covers the, the bottom of the pyramid, the most important step, which is having a method of learning new skills. Now, I got a couple of extra bonus tips for you. I think you'll all, you're also going to find very helpful. Number one, and this is something that, that I'm working on myself because it never came naturally to me, but number one is learn to be quiet and listen. Listen to your intuition. Listen to that still small voice in the back of your head that tells you what you ought to be doing. And I know some of you guys are listening to this and think this is hippie woo woo BS. And I used to think that way for a long time, but this, this really works for me. I, I pray to God, I ask God uh, to help give me direction or I just pose a question to my subconscious mind, you know, however you want to frame it. And then sit there and, and quiet my thoughts and wait for an answer to come. And it always works. Like, it's absolutely amazing. I figured this out actually with YouTube videos and I did that for this video. So if you're enjoying this video, then th there's your proof that it works. I had no idea what I was gonna do a video on today. So I said, okay, I'm just gonna, just gonna sit on my bed for a couple minutes, quiet my mind and, and just wait for what comes to me. And so that's what came to me. I, a little small voice in the back of my head said, a lot of people are worried about financial security right now. Maybe you should help them with that. So um, if you can learn to do that, that can be extremely valuable for you. And then the last thing I'll leave you with is always be learning. Learn something new every day, right? Or advance, just even if it's a tiny little bit, always be advancing, always be learning. And it doesn't, you know, don't worry about whether it's something that's, that's marketable or not. I mean, sometimes you should worry about that. Sometimes just learn the things that are interesting to you because your, your interest, I believe that your interest is leading you in the right direction in one way or another. And the, the things that you're learning uh, that are just interesting to you might not be relevant to your career right now. And you might not see any way that they could be relevant to your career. But 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the road, they could absolutely be a, a life changing for you that you could create a career out of these things. There's almost nothing these days that people don't, that, that there isn't somebody that's creating a career out of. So follow your passion, follow your interest. I mean, I'm not saying to throw out your, your practicality and reasonableness and, and you know, obviously when I gave you these four steps, this is very practical, but at the same time, follow your passions as well because you have no idea how those are going to fill into your life in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to learn to do marketing, if you would like to learn to grow a YouTube channel, or if you'd like to find a remote job, then uh, let me know in the comments and I can give you um, resources to do each of those things. Now, I'd very much appreciate if you hit the thumbs up button because it makes YouTube algorithm like me better. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos, which are gonna be very helpful for you. Share this video with anybody that you think might be helped by it.
right? There's a lot of people right now that are that are worrying, that uh, would like to be have that sense of security, that would like to have that um, psychological peace that this knowledge provides. So share it if it could be helpful for somebody. And I think you might also really enjoy this video all about how faith is absolutely crucial for success. This is something that most people completely overlook, but, but success in just about any area of your life really depends on faith. So check that out. I'll see you next time.